everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Subscribe to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today, I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of After Class. So, I'm actually going to be updating to the newest version of After Class. It's got more stuff for Anders, but until that's done, I'm going to play this one. I'm just having it downloading in the background. So, anyway, guys, this is right. This picks up right after the ooh the steamy uh, steamy sauna scene that everyone seemed to love. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy. I'm going to continue for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in, shall we? Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Lots of things have been occupying your mind today. You scratched your head, trying to make sense of it all. They're almost tangled, mixed each other, mixing each other, mixed with each other in a melting pot. Uh, why am I even trying? At least the night sky here is beautiful. There was a light, there was little light pollution here, so it was easy to see everything in the night sky. The absence of the clouds helped tremendously, too. Ah, it's so pretty. You closed your eyes, listening to the sound of the surroundings. Now forget about me, okay? You have to move on. I won't forget you, I promise. So let's head back together, okay? Ah! As much as you wanted to remember all of it, you couldn't. Even if you tried, your head would start hurting. It was almost like it blocked something that you shouldn't be remembering. Hey. Hmm? Oh, sorry, it's Tor. I thought it was, uh... I thought that was a certain tiger. Hey, it's cold outside! Maybe it's cold outside. Here! Oh, what's this? Lighter blend of oolong tea. Maybe you'll like it. I heard that you found the dark oolong blend weird, so let's give it another go with a different blend. Oh, okay. It's warm. Of course it is, silly. You noticed that you didn't sit down, even though there were a lot of empty spaces next to you. Maybe he was waiting for your offer. Ah, oh, sorry, please sit down. Thanks, I'll do that. He moved a little bit so he could sit down comfortably without getting too close to you. You look trouble. Is something bothering you? Uh, no, nothing important, nothing too important, no worries. Of course it was important, but you couldn't just rain on him with your woes. He didn't... He didn't have to... He didn't have to know. It was already... It was already troubling enough for you and the others. No need to bring him... No need to bring him in. I see. I hope whatever it is, it can be solved, yeah? Yeah, I hope so too. Hey, I have something to ask you. Hmm? Go ahead. Are you still gonna visit us in the near future? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Why did you ask? Just curious, that's all. Huh, okay. You're from Highwell, aren't you? Yeah, I went there to study. Met all my friends there. I wonder how hard it is over there. Considering that Lars was homeless before I met him, I'd say that's the, that it's rough. I can't tell him that, though. It's not too different than Waterfront to me, although it's sort of a bustling little town. The city part has a lot of activity. Where I live is a bit, of the, is a bit to the rural side, so it's really peaceful. I see. Sounds like a lot of sounds like a fun place to live in. <sighs> I've only been there for a week, but yeah, I'd say so. Okay, okay. Still, why'd you ask? You're not planning to move there, are you? Hmm. <laughs> I was kidding. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I was planning that now. I've never left Waterfront my whole life, so I might plan a trip for there soon. I've saved enough money to leave anyway. Don't know what's stopping me at all. Huh. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but if you're going to Highwell, I can at least offer you some hospitality. You helped us big time in here, even though you're just doing your job. Doing the same doing the same when you get there is the least I can do. <laughs> I keep that in mind. It's not like it's too important or that I'm rushing anyway. Everyone has moved on, and I'm the one that's still dwelling in the past. Man, I'm lame. No, you're not! Huh? I totally understand where that's come where you're coming from. Honest I do. You're not lame, not at all, and please don't say that you are. Huh, you really remind me of him. Uh, who is him? Just an old friend of mine that I miss dearly. Aw, why aren't you getting in touch with him? Things happen, that's all. Like, I, like what I said, I still haven't moved on, but I really should. Things are ever-changing, and I'm still here stuck in my own past. I'm sure they won't wait for me, no matter how much I regret what I've done. That should have... I shouldn't have sent that letter to him. Everything everything Anders and Mr. Parker said resonated with you at this moment. It was clear that he was enduring such painful memories. You didn't say anything to him, but you did pat him on the back. <laughs> How embarrassing! 
I was here to offer you some comfort, but I ended up getting comforted. It's getting a little bit late. Yeah, it is. Also, thanks for the tea, Tora. I liked it. I'm glad you liked it. Let me take the cup. It's my job, after all. Thanks again. Don't mention it. I'll go back in. I think you should, too. I'll be back in. I'll be back here in a bit, for a bit. Hey, one last thing. Hmm? You're too kind and experienced, Henry. Some might use that to their advantage, and it might hurt you. But I hope you keep being your kind self. He said that before heading back into the inn. Kind and inexperienced, huh? That would translate to naive. I don't know how many times people have labeled me that. No use thinking about it. All I can do is keep being myself and moving forward. Man, you felt man, you felt powerful and wise when you said that. <laughs> Ugh, oh, now it's getting colder. I should head back inside too. What a day. Huh? It seemed like Coach Gill passed out on the table. Upon closer inspection, you saw him shuddering a little bit. You wondered if you should wake him up so you, so he wouldn't catch a cold. Uh, let's let him be. He didn't feel like waking up the beast. Uh, who knows what he'd do if you tried to wake him from his slumber. Uh, let's head back inside. <laughs> Once you got inside, the first thing you noticed was how weird the room smelled. It screamed sake, and the stuffy air didn't help with it. Funny how it was chilly out there, but it was the exact opposite in here as soon as you entered. You noticed Lars had been sleeping had been sleepily had been sleeping soundly with his shirt off. His arms were spread out, taking some space of the futon next to his. Although him doing that made him look so inviting, especially with his soft-looking belly fur. And for the first time, or maybe the second time, he made he looked so vulnerable. You thought of rubbing his belly and probably something else, and it's big. God, Henry, you shouldn't. He's drunk. That aside, there was something that crossed your mind. Was he always shirtless? You're pretty sure that you left him with his shirt on. Did it get so hot that he undressed himself? He scanned around the room. There was no air conditioning unit. There was an electric fan sitting in the far corner of the room, though. After carefully treading around the room, trying to not wake him, you managed to reach the electric fan. You turned it on, and it started whirring, making the room less stuffy in a hot minute. Huh, <sighs> hmm, now this is better. The whirring sound was definitely louder than your steps. She so you walked to the futon with glee. No, not really. Just walk forward. Just walk toward the futon without being scared that you sh that you would wake the beast up. Once you reached your soft portable bedding on which you sat, you grabbed your phone, swing swiping your fingers across the screen. <sighs> Nothing too interesting tonight. Maybe I should just go to sleep now. <laughs> A low grunt out of nowhere grabbed your attention. Before long, you saw Lars sitting up, placing his forehead against his hand. Ugh, my head hurts. Ah, one second. You got up and headed to the main room to grab a cup of water for Lars. Surprisingly, you didn't see Coach Gill anywhere. Did he go back to his room? Well, that wasn't why you're here. Well, let's just get some water for Lars. You came back. Lars still sitting up at his, with his head down. Poor guy must be having a hangover right now. Here, Lars, drink up. Maybe it'll help you feel better. Ah, thank you. He grabbed the water and took a sip, and the next thing you know, he gulped it down in one go, causing him to start coughing. Your hand quickly moved itself, patting him on the back. Whoa, careful! Don't drink too fast. Sorry, I didn't realize I was that dehydrated. It's okay, just drink slowly next time. Hmm, I will. Silence filled the room. Had it always been like this with him? You didn't quite remember. All you knew is that you wanted to strike up a conversation so bad. Why are you still awake? I don't know! <laughs> hmm, okay. My head still hurts. I'm going to get some fresh air outside. Lars got up and walked toward the door. You'd gotten used to the room temperature, so when Lars opened the door, a rush of cold wind immediately hit your skin. Despite the thick fur you have, it didn't help much, so it was making you shudder. It's probably the same for Lars, because you noticed she closed the door as quick as, as quick as you could react to it. On second thought, maybe fresh air isn't what I need right now. <laughs> if you say so. He walked back and sat down on his futon with a thud. He swore you could feel the ground shaking a little bit when he did. A little bit when he did. Was it an earthquake, or were you just imagining it? I'm gonna lie down instead. Okay. So he did. He laid down, arm placed on his forehead. Then his arm moved slightly lower, seemingly to block the light from reaching his eyes. You read somewhere that light makes headaches worse. Maybe you should have turned off the light. Hey, do you need me to turn off the light? Uh, oh, n no, not at all. Don't worry about it. Really? Yeah, I'll get used to it. Eh, I'll turn off the lights anyway. Uh, you, you don't have to, but thank you. See, you don't mind. See, you do mind the lights. He didn't reply with words and said with a low grunt. Was that a disappointing grunt or was it something else? You wouldn't know. 
To your surprise, the light was dimmable. You were just thinking of messing with it for a bit, but it seemed like Lars wouldn't approve of it, so you, so you didn't. You turned it off, and suddenly your vision being turned dark. Even with the light from outside, you still couldn't see that much, but you played it cool anyway. You walked around, carefully treading around the room just like before. Just a little bit more... Ah! Before you knew it, you were falling down onto the ground. You closed your eyes, ready for the impact. At least you thought you'd hit the ground, but where was it? It had been a while. You should have been crouching You should have been crouching down by now, holding in the pain. But instead, you felt a pair of arms holding you, preventing you from falling down. You opened your eyes, and as, you were, as they were slowly getting used to the dark room, you saw Lars in front of you. It seemed like those hands were his. Are you alright? Ignoring his concern, you stared at him in awe. Did he just catch you despite his headache? That's kind of cool, you thought. Uh, hello? You blinked several times, shaking your head. R right Yeah, I I'm okay. I'm glad. He helped you get up before letting you go. You wished it would last forever. Th thanks, Lars. Yeah, don't worry about it. He went to lying back down on his futon as you slowly sat down on yours. What was I doing before all this again? Right, I was playing with my phone. You probably shouldn't stay up for too long. We have to leave early later. And you have school too, don't you? You're right. Yeah, I'll head to bed in a bit. All right. While aimlessly browsing the internet with your phone, you notice Lars turning and tossing around the corner of your eye. You didn't want to. You didn't want to look at him directly because you were afraid of him thinking that you were you were a creep. He let out a grunt out of nowhere, followed with a sigh. After was he in pain or was he getting bored? You would never know. Ask him what's up. Unless you asked him, that is. He was turning around left and right, sighing here and there. Before you know it, his back was facing you. You decided to ignore it for a bit, but then his tail was brushing against your left leg. What the heck was he doing? He's playing with his pee pee. Hey, what are you doing? Mm. No response, but his tail was moving back and forth against you. Usually for you and Coach Gill, it would mean that you're excited, but he's a cat. A big cat. What could it possibly mean? You okay? Yeah. Well, that kind of response didn't spark joy. There's something wrong with him. Are you sure? Not really. I'm bored. Thank goodness. I didn't mean it that way. I, I, I thought you weren't feeling good or something. Ha, huh, I get you. No worries. He turned around, staring at your face that was being illuminated by the phone screen. What are you doing with your phone? Oh, nothing. Nothing much, really. Just browsing the internet. Anything interesting? Not really. One of those days, huh? Yeah, one of those days. I probably should lie down and try going to sleep. Sounds like a plan. Let's see, a small rural town. Okay, so now. Good night, Lars. Good night. You honestly weren't so sure that you'd fall asleep, but you'd been awake for the whole day, so it's better that you rest your eyes instead of staring at the phone screen for too long. As you laid your body onto the mattress, you finally felt the exhaustion, which was a good thing, because you didn't realize how tired you'd been. To your surprise, the futon was actually rather was actually rather fluffy, despite looking flat. Sure, you did lay on lay down on it for a bit on, for a bit on it, but Lars was on top of you while you did, and you were desperately trying to escape the scene. At least you fell asleep before something weird happened. What am I thinking about? <laughs> It didn't feel like you were going to fall asleep anytime soon, but your eyes were getting weary, at least. Well, no use thinking on it. Um, let's close my eyes and see what will happen next. I wonder what will happen. <laughs> Times like these were the most annoying of all. You're supposed to be drifting to sleep right now, but your senses were going into overdrive. Especially your mind. Countless questions suddenly rushed through your brain. Tame a few, you were wondering if Lars was already sleeping, but you didn't hear any snoring. Did he usually snore? You couldn't remember. But you felt like you'd heard his snoring before. And then you were wondering if he remembered anything. He, if, if, if he remembered anything he did to you just a while ago. But it didn't seem like he did. Or maybe he did, but he was too embarrassed to talk about it. Ah, I'd be too embarrassed to talk about it, yeah. Maybe he felt guilty about it and decided not to say anything. It was getting frustrating, being unable to fall asleep despite how your body screamed exhaustion. Ah, I can't fall asleep! As more time passed, the air was getting chilly, making you shudder, desperately reaching for the blanket. At least that was what you were going to do, until you heard a snore next to you, stopping you from doing so. Lars was already sleeping, apparently. He suddenly moved a little bit closer to you, arm and leg locking you in place. You froze, trying not to move that so much you wouldn't wake him up. It didn't last long, though. He let go of you after a few seconds. For some reason, you felt disappointed, but also relieved. With him letting you free, you went under the blanket. Now you felt like you could fall asleep. It was the temperature the whole, it was the temperature the whole time, after all. Mm-hmm. Lars liked that. Huh. Interesting. Day 8. Alright. Whoa, what's this? Notices your passing day. <laughs> ah! Q! 
can't b breathe you woke up, sweating buckets and gasping for air. Looking to your left, there was a massive arm laid down onto your face, directly on your nose. It was Lars' arm, stopping you from getting enough air. He looked, he, was, he looked like he was sleeping soundly, so he gently moved his hand away from you, yet doing it as fast as you could since you didn't want to die from not being able to breathe properly. Once you were free, you wiped the sweat off your face and took a deep breath. Ha! Huh! I thought I was going to die! You looked at Lars briefly, and you were suddenly overcome with fear for some reason. You were sure that it wasn't because of what happened just now, but rather what happened before you woke up. What did I dream about? I, I can't remember anything. I need to get some fresh air. Again. You tiptoed your way out of the room and headed to the shared room. Hmm? Oh. Eh? Eh? Uh, hi. Uh, hello. What are you doing here, Mr. Parker? I, uh, couldn't fall back asleep, so I was about to head out and take a bath. Around this hour? Yeah. Not need fresh air. Not warm, damp air. Oh, okay then. Do you want to join me? Ah, no, sorry. I wanted to get some fresh air. <laughs> I see. Well, I'll be at the hot spring if you change your mind. Hmm? Have fun, Mr. Parker. You too. You did say you wanted to get fresh air, but everywhere everywhere in here felt like fresh air, to be honest. Maybe I'll start by walking out of this room. <laughs> Aimless as you were, you found yourself walking toward the dining room. Surprisingly, you saw Anders and Mark sitting by the table, talking and drinking tea together. I wonder if I should approach them. No reason not to. It was everyone's It was everyone's dining room anyway. And when you were deciding whether to join them or not, Mark saw you and gestured you to come over. And so you did. The smell of oolong tea was quite strong in a, in a good way. It made you feel relaxed, especially on a cold night like this. Would you like some tea, Henry? Uh, yeah, oolong tea, PTSD for me. Yes, please. Why not? I can't fall back asleep, so I may as well get some caffeine to keep me awake. Good choice. Is it lighter oolong tea, though? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna need a cup of coffee after this. Another hot day. Another hot day. Semi cool in my room, though. Okay then. Apparently, they have one more cup on the table. Did they anticipate you coming over here tonight? Sit next to Mark. It didn't matter. Anders started pouring the tea into the empty cup while he sat down next to Mark. Huh? <laughs> Where's Big Kitty? He's still sleeping in his room. Ha! Huh, okay. For some reason, Mark was a bit calmer tonight. At least that was the impression he was giving you. Seeing him being calm like this is kind of reassuring. <laughs> I guess you got bored and decided to come here, huh? I suppose. I did bump into Mr. Parker before coming here, though. Oh, we probably woke him up. <laughs> you think so? He's a heavy sleeper, no? Oh, yeah, he is. Either way, not your fault. Not our fault. He's probably, he probably couldn't fall asleep like the rest of us. Yeah, <laughs> You also noticed that Anders was more relaxed than before. It's nice to have some time for just us students alone. We've been hanging out with adults too much. Plus, just just us being here means we can talk we can talk smack about them. Heh. <laughs> nope. The usual Mark is back. He kind of liked this Mark, honestly, so that wasn't a bad thing. You probably shouldn't do that. If you want to do that, talk talk about Talbot instead. He's a piece of shit. Talbot. Anders showed you an expression that you'd never thought you would see coming from him. Sorry, didn't mean to say that out loud. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> That's the usual adders for you. Really, that was surprising. Not a bad thing, though. <laughs> You're usually so quiet. People would think that you didn't like them near you. That's not true. If anything, that's me. Really? That's also surprising. I learned something big in less than a minute. Less than one minute. <laughs> well, uh... No, I'm fine with you here. If I wasn't, I wouldn't have called you here. Right, intuitive as always. Nah, you're just that predictable. Oh, God. Mark. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Ah, see? Amber's let out a chuckle before he quickly went back to drinking his tea. Fine, I guess I am. Nothing wrong with it, though. You said you bumped into Mr. Stone on your way here. I'm surprised he's not here. Not that you mention it. Well, he went to the hot spring. And you didn't join him? You had a chance to see him naked? All by yourself? You could have caressed his plump chest with no one, inter with no one interrupting you. You almost choked on your tea when he said that out loud. Th don't be a weirdo, Mark! Ha, ah, you little, ah, oh, you sweet little hypocrite. He was right. You would have liked that. Or maybe you wouldn't have liked that, since you had your eyes on Lars as of late. 
That was it. You choked on your tea violently. Anders quickly came to your aid, patting your back gently. Stop teasing. <clears throat> Sorry. Stop teasing the poor guy, Mark. Hmm. Ha! Ah, oh, thanks, Anders. I mean, I'm not wrong. I just wish he would have chosen me instead. He felt like he, he like he felt like he said something about choosing, but it was so quiet that you decided that you were hearing things. Today's gonna suck. Whew! What do you mean? We're headed to school right after. I imagine we're all gonna be looking like we just survived some kind of apocalypse. It's not the end of the world. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!